One of my most popular YouTube videos was one I did in 2020 on the very best lenses for shooting with Sony for sports photography. So I've been waiting for this guy to be able to do that again. Although we now have this one and we have this one and we have these two, well, this one didn't exist. So I've got a bunch of lenses here that we're gonna talk about. I'm gonna go through them kind of from your left to right and just talk about the attributes of each one just so that um, there's a very clear understanding of what they are and what they're for and their purpose and also what sports they're ideal for. So we're gonna start with the ultimate eye candy machine, which is the 600 F4. Um, this is a point I love to make about this particular lens. This is my favorite telephoto lens to use. Uh, unfortunately, it's too long to use for many sports, but it's great for wildlife, especially out west. So when you go, when you leave the eastern United States or the middle, middle America and you head out west, all of a sudden animals and birds are far away. And so this thing with converters is kind of a must if you're really serious about uh, your uh, nature photography, especially animals and birds. But this is a fantastic lens. There's no better lens. Um, Sony doesn't make anything better for like shooting birds in a nest, uh, birds in flight, as long as they're you know a distance away and you can't get to where they are because of especially water, for example. But for uh, shooting American football and all field sports like lacrosse and soccer, um, this thing is the machine. It is vastly superior at blowing out the background of virtually any background. Uh, it doesn't matter where you are, or what you're doing. It is just an awesome, awesome, awesome piece of glass, which is why it's my favorite. The second lens we're gonna talk about is the 400 28. Now it is more versatile than the 600 because it's 400 millimeters instead of 600, which means you can now take it more places and do more things with it. And it's a full stop faster, so it lets in twice as much light as a 600 F4. Now most people that are gonna buy one of these two, uh, especially in the sports photographer realm, will go, well, I'm just gonna get the four because I can use a teleconverter and get the field of view of the six. But make no mistake, even though you can do that, you are not changing the depth of field characteristics of the optic. Now, I wanna be very clear about this. When you add a teleconverter to a lens, you look through less of the optic, but the, the all the functionality of the depth of field that you have, that is to say what's out of focus in the background, is still the same even though you added the teleconverter. So um, it's very confusing because they call them 1.4 times, like as if there's a fraction that's now new. Um, so basically nothing will blow the background out better than this, especially something far away. The 400 to 8 though is way more versatile and that's why most people buy it if they're doing like sports photography as a career and they're making a living doing it. The 400 is the most versatile lens because it really has true reach, really valuable true reach, but it's 2.8. So you can take it indoors, you can shoot in super low light. Um, I've shot weddings in large churches with this uh, under candlelit uh, ceremonies and it worked great. So it lets in gobs of light, and then you can use the teleconverters to make it either a 560 f4 or an 800 56. Um, so that's the second one. Um, the next one in just range of focal length going down is the 200 to 600. And to, to my mind, this is like the best deal in terms of money, like putting money out and getting the maximum amount for your money. At $2,000, this is a smoke and buy. Um, there are many, many different lenses that compete with this lens in the marketplace, but almost none of them are sealed, which means they, uh, they, you know, they, they elongate when you zoom them. And this is like a kind of a place for dust to get in. And um, those lenses are more compact, but this is a sealed autofocus and an internal focusing and internal zooming lens. And it's incredibly sharp. Uh, I have a video on this lens. Specifically, a lot of people think it's not sharp because a lot of amateurs buy this and they go out to do like bird photography and they are using too low a shutter speed. And so the pictures are blurry and they think it's the lens's problem. It's not. One other tip that I would give you that Sony will not kind of do publicly, but if you add a filter to the front of this lens, it changes the optic and it can make it out of focus. 
So I recommend do not use a front filter on this lens, even though it's got threads for it. So that's a little tip from PMR. Um, the next one down is the venerable 100 to 400 G Master. And this is the lens that came out with the A9 in 2017. So I think it was in March of 2017, this one hit the streets for the very first time. It's a fantastically sharp lens. The 100 to 400 range is really great for shooting birds in flight, especially a lot of landscape photographers end up buying this lens because of its extreme range. Um, this pairs up really well with like the 20 to 70, uh, the new 2070 f4 zoom. If you went out with that, you'd have 24 to 400 millimeter in two lenses. You'd have a little gap. You'd have a tiny little gap between 70 and 100, but that's negligible. Uh, and with clear image zoom, who cares, right? So this is a great lens. Uh, this is a great lens for auto racing, uh, daytime, like if you're doing a road race as opposed to like an oval. Um, but it's a really great lens to have in the pits. Uh, you can, you know, and what's really significant about this lens is um, you can hump it all day and it's not gonna kill you like these will. I mean, even, these, even though these are really lightweight, um, all day long, this gets really tough, okay? It's hard on your back and your shoulders and your neck. Um, that's what's great about these. You can put this on a black rapid on your right side, have another camera on your left, and you can shoot all day like that. Um, a lot of hikers use this, for same reasons. It's a really, really good value. Now this one, this is the new 3028. It's all covered in black tape because uh, the date today is uh, October 19th. And um, this lens doesn't exist yet in the world. And so I'm recording this video on October 19th even though it won't be shown until the launch day, which will be either the 6th or 7th of November. But I am currently shooting this lens. I have not made a picture with it yet, but I will do that tonight. I'm gonna to shoot some high school football and begin my testing of it. But I know what it is before I've even shot it because when they put GM on something, it's just bad to the bone. Um, the great advantage of the 3028 is it's not as costly as these two. These two are eleven and twelve thousand dollars, respectively. This one, I can't really say the price yet because it's not been announced, and they're not sure what they're going to charge for it. But um, let it suffice to say, this is going to be a fantastic deal for the money, and, and I'm shocked at what they decided to sell it for, and I'm overjoyed because so many people will come into Sony just to get this lens because it's so light and sharp. Um, but anyway, I'll have to talk more about this later. But this lens is the bare minimum for photojournalism and for sports photography. So if you are like shooting uh, games, high school and stuff, and you're maybe selling to parents and stuff like that, this is what puts you in the next league. Now, all kinds of people have 7200 2.8s, eights, like vir virtually everybody has that. Um, and I, this is something I haven't mentioned yet, but between 100 millimeter and 200 millimeter, that's a logarithmic change in depth of field. When you go from 200 millimeter to 300 millimeter, that's another logarithmic change. 300 to 400 millimeter is another logarithmic change. 400 to 600 is a massive change because it's 200 millimeters. So each time you change your focal length in a telephoto by 100 millimeters or more, there is radical change happening in what the background looks like. So, the background gets completely blown out into like a beautiful watercolor, for instance, with the 600 and the 428. The 300 is going to do much the same thing, but at 300 millimeter focal length instead of four or six. But this lens is just going to prove itself to be the hottest uh, long glass they've ever had. My predict, it'll be incredibly difficult to keep it stock for camera stores. And I think Sony, no matter what they project about sales for this thing, they're way off they're way off because they're gonna sell the crap out of these things. I'm 100% confident in that. So I'm gonna get my order in as soon as I possibly can because I want one bad. Um, but anyway, there'll be another whole video on this, uh, a review, a proper review of it that I will also drop on the same day that this video drops because I can't do anything with this video because the lens doesn't exist yet. But in November it will and that's when all these videos will come out at once. So please check out my review of this lens because by then, It'll be all finished and I'll have all kinds of experience with it. Next going down is the, uh, the 7200 2.8 G Master Mark II. Now this lens is awesome because it's so lightweight. It's just, it weighs almost, 
you can't say it weighs almost nothing because it doesn't, but this is such a radical departure from the weight of all 7200 2.8s that came before this one. Uh, it takes the teleconverters just like the 300 2.8. And by the way, I didn't mention that. Um, all these lenses that are white, except the 1.4 and the 2X teleconverter. So every one of these is compatible with that. Um, but the, the, uh, the 7200 2.8 has really rewritten what that lens can be. Uh, it is a very approachable price. Uh, you know, it's over two grand, but it's really worth the money because sitting here is not just a 7200 2.8, but also a 300 f4. Because if you put the, you know, the 1.4 on it, that's about what you get. Um, so it's just a really, really elegant lens. I've shot a lot of birds in flight down in Florida, spoonbills, with this lens on the 2x converter. Um, and so it's a 140 to 400 millimeter uh, 5.6 incredibly sharp pictures and weighing almost nothing. So I think this, I'll have to see what happens, but this one and this one are gonna be pretty close for birds in flight for me because this is also so light and I don't know, we'll have to see. Um, then the, the next one down is the older version of the 7200 2.8 G Master. And this is still a very legitimate lens. It's less costly than the two version, although it's, it's heavier. And by the way, the new 300 28, crazy. This thing weighs 51 ounces. It weighs the same as the original 7200 28 G Master, which is nuts. I mean, that's just, that's crazy. But anyway, uh, still a very good value, uh, very sharp lens, but it's not gonna have the, um, the dual autofocus motors, uh, the linear autofocusing motors that this does. This is gonna be like, for extreme, like NBA basketball, for luge and certain Olympic sports, um, the autofocus is gonna keep up to almost no matter what you point this at. Um, this one's not gonna be quite as edgy and, and, and it's not gonna nail things quite to the extent this will. I messed up and I gotta fix it. I completely omitted the brand new 7200 F4, which I absolutely love. I love this lens. It's so lightweight and so tiny. It's just awesome. So for day games and stuff, this is great. It's also great because if you don't have enough money to buy the 2.8 version, this is gonna let in twice as much light as any other lens that's in this segment, uh, like the 75 to 300, whatever. This has the dual linear autofocus motors just like these. It's a great lens. So my apologies for forgetting it. And uh, here you are. Going on down next is the very venerable 135 millimeter 1.8 G Master. This is one of the sharpest lenses I have ever used in my entire life. And I, you know, I own these. I mean, I, I don't own this anymore, but like I'll have one of these. It, it's just an incredibly sharp lens. The 135 1.8 is just nearly perfect, okay? <laughs> What's holding it back from perfection is two things. Um, the 135 1.8 is incredibly fast autofocusing lens uh, and I would have confidence shooting it at anything, but it does not have the dual linear autofocus motors of the newer lenses. And so that would be a big upgrade to get that in a future version of it. But the biggest crime against this lens is that it doesn't take the 1.4 or the 2X teleconverter, which is a real shame. And I think it was, I hate to say it, but it was a mistake on Sony's part. They should have made this lens compatible with the 1.4 especially. But I love this lens. I, when I shoot portraits, this is my go-to lens. There, I just, yeah, 135 might be a little long for shooting portraits, but it's worth, it's worth it to me to do this. It's such a fantastic lens. It's so sharp. It's got so much contrast and it's just, it's an impeccable way to work. It really is. Um, Next, going down, we have the least expensive lens, I think. Yes, it's the least expensive lens we're gonna talk about in this video, and that is the 85 1.8. Now, it's not a G or a G Master. This lens dates back to the ancient times of the A7, okay? But it is a very, very sharp lens. Um, and the autofocus speed of that lens is actually better than the 85 1.4 G Master. And um, I had that lens and I loved it for portraits until this guy came out. And then I pedaled it and I realized that this one was actually a little better for autofocus. And um, 
I'm certain that Sony's gonna make an 85-1.2 or a 1.4, a new one, a G Master, you know, two version or whatever, but they haven't done that as far as today goes yet. Um, but this is a great lens and the very least expensive lens that you can get. By the way, one of the things I love to remind people about is the 85-1.8 on an APS-C camera gives you a 136 millimeter 1.8 field of view. It's a wonderful way to get this sort of look almost um, out of it. The next one is the 50 millimeter 1.4 G Master, which is pretty new. It's only been out for a few months. It is a very, very capable, very great, really, really good lens. It's very fast. It has the dual linear autofocus motors. It's, it's smoking fa hot fast. It's very sharp. And in my opinion, for sports photography, it edges out the 50 millimeter 1.2 G Master because of its lack of weight. It's so much lighter than the GM2 or the GM, uh, the 51 II. Uh, I love that lens for portraits, but for sports, I'd rather save the weight and go with the, the 51.4. Um, I have two last lenses that I didn't talk about yet, and this is one of them. This is the, uh, the, the 24 to 70 G Master Mark II, and this pairs perfectly with this lens. Uh, it's absolutely awesome. And this is a great lens for volleyball um, and any sport where you can get really, really close. It's also a fantastic lens to do portraits with. When you're shooting team photos, you can do the group, group shot, and then you can zoom in and do, you know, at 70 millimeter, you can do portraits or whatever. It's just super versatile. It's good for um, basketball underneath the net. It's really good for that, as is the 50. Um, but for boxing, there's really, it's hard for me to think of a better lens for shooting boxing than the 2470 GM2. Um, I have one last lens um, that I wanted to bring up, and that is one that you may have never heard of, but it's a, a 70 to 350 G lens. Um, this lens is made specifically for the APS-C cameras. This also pairs great with the FX30 if you shoot video, um, but it's a really good way to get a really nice long focal length for not a lot of money. Um, so this is a very, very good lens. If you are shooting the, an A6600 or an A6000 or the new A6700, this lens pairs up really well um, with that if you are on a budget and, and you just need something to shoot real telephoto work with. Um, one last thing, um, when you are using the Sony full-frame cameras, I use something called punch-in all the time. We pros that shoot all the time with the Sony gear, we love this feature. And what we do is we take the focus hold button, which is like right here. Um, it's, this is a focus hold, you can't see it because it's black, but on the white lenses you can see it much easier. These are usually typically in three different positions on the lens. And what you would do is you retask that button to do an automatic 1.5x zoom in on the sensor. So the viewfinder then presents you with a zoomed in version of that picture uh, at 1.5x. And so what that means by default is that by pressing that button, your 428 becomes a 6028. Um, your 600 f4 becomes a 900 f4 and so on. And this is a great feature because even like the 51.4 G Master becomes like a 75 or I think it's a 75 millimeter at 1.5x, which all of a sudden is 75.14. It's a great focal length for basketball. So if you are shooting the, either the APS-C sensor lenses, remember that if you're, when you're trying to figure out what to get for yourself, remember that there's this big conversion factor to consider 1.5X if you're talking about a full frame lens. So every lens I've shown you today, except for the 70 to 350, is gonna give you a 1.5X. Um, and so it's gonna get you further out there. What that means is, if you buy the 70 to 200 GM2 lens, for instance, now you're gonna have a 3028 in terms of at least focal length, a field of view. You won't have this look because it's not a 3028, but it will get you that field of view and get you zoomed in the action better. So I know there'll be a lot of questions and comments on this. Um, these of course are you know, my opinions, but I've been shooting for you know, 35 years professionally and uh, I'm so excited to be sitting here to put this video together and to really, like I never see all these lenses out at once at the same time. And I borrowed a couple of them from Sony because I don't own them anymore, like the older 
this one and this one I don't own anymore. I don't have this one, but the rest of them are all mine. And um, I gotta tell you, it's so awesome to be shooting Sony when you have all these different options. And um, this is the 75th lens that Sony has made. I mean, it's just, they've gone so far so fast. Mm -hmm.